Hey guys, I am Party Gamer 101 and I'm with Kika Gamer 16 and I'm with Excel K12. Fuck you. <laughs> and we're going to be playing Monster <laughs> From. <laughs> we're going to be playing Monster From. Now, we, as of trio, we've only played this one time previously and we all got rejections. Yay. Yay. Rude. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully this time's a lot more better. Um, so I'm... Uh, you can skip this part. Yeah. If you want. Um. Oh yeah, full game. Um. How do skip? Oh yeah, skip. So choose player one time. Well, yeah, going for the same character. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Oh yeah, wait. How do you give yourself a custom name? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Leave me be. Uh, no, I am. Excuse me, keyboard. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, bad song. Ooh, bad song. Shut up, Axel. Technically, rule 11. Um, okay. How is that rule 11? I'm saying I'm know. tired. <laughs> uh, uh, Kinky Axel. He's heading brick away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, I was doing my name from last time. <laughs> did you? I thought your name was something else. <laughs> No, I think I did Kinky Bailey last time. It was Bitchly Baby. Wow. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Let's add this to... Red. Let's add this to the list of things I've said today. Of course. <laughs> Which, Bailey can confirm, is a lot. Uh, I already did Sexy. I've done Kinky. Um... Bondage loving Bailey. No! <laughs> no, so it doesn't fit. Bondage Bailey. Bondage Bail. Bail. <laughs> Bondage Bay. Bondage Bay. <laughs> Bay. <Bond> <laughs> Here we go! Dirty. And we are yet to. Shall I skip this part as well? Yeah, we can. Oh, you can. It's the same thing to skip. Wait, what is like this? Did the first time. It's just gonna announce all the characters. Alright, oh, um, yeah. Miranda Vanderbeet, 19, a sweet mermaid <laughs> princess who was cute as a genocidal. <laughs> Damien, <laughs> Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste out for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensate oh compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam D. Lion Court the Fourth, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dog. Yay! Holly Geist, twenty-two. A party goes through uh, an insatiable hunger for the wrong things. What? And Vera Axel, joking. And Vera Hovlin, a mean self made gorgeon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We already had three weeks to our prom day, and even more daunting, we had three weeks to woo them and cook in a heart. But I already said we were young and afraid and we were ready to start. Time to get rejected. No. You don't ask so it's funny. Welcome to the monster prom stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose what kind of deviant sicker you are. Monster prom stupidest pop quiz ever. TM. I can't read it. I want to say something. 
Oh. About like snacks and stuff because we'll I kind of figured a... out. Oh, okay. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your questions into character stats. What were you going to say? Okay, so basically, for stats, I've noticed that I, whenever you have to choose between questions, you're not supposed to really choose. Like, sometimes it's obvious who you want to go for, but it depends on your stats. Because, like, some answer choices are dependent on, like, the stats, and they mean, like, boldness or creativity. It's about the better stats you have, which choice. So you have to, like, think about what kind of, uh, that the answer is, so keep yeah. that in mind for whoever you want to go for. Okay. <laughs> the way each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. That's that. If you, if you <laughs> had two or six of an animal, which animal would it be? A grey white shark, in fact a fucking animal, let's make it at least storytelling. A swan. They're classy, but it, wow. it reminds me of that myth of a lady, leader and a swan. So at least by best bestiality standards, it has a certain chip check appeal. A human being, because I'm kind of a douche bag who loves to find loopholes and stupid questions like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought this would be Miranda, right? The second one? Because she's classy? No? Uh, I don't well, know. I'm classy. All things matter is like what kind of stat you're wanting for that type of character. I'm going for that. The coolest reality show would be People in positions of power must face all sorts of questions relevant to their field, and if they fail, they lose their jobs and society wins. Eight rich people fighting weekly challenges to see who's the best at giving money to you. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Twelve experts on ver various arts of seduction live in a house where they must face a common challenge. Do a single potato into marriage somehow. <laughs> Why is your obsession with Miranda? We said the last time we played. Yeah, we're going for the opposite of who we usually go for. So Billy's going for Polly and I'm going for Miranda. And you can go for whoever. Yeah, to screw you with. If you're an ice cream, which flavour would it be? Success, double cream, delight, grenier, and mer... Merinka? So, rainbows and gummy bears. Meat. Spicy chocolate, no chocolate on fire. Tequila and coke. <laughs> tequila and coke. Uh, I feel like tequila and coke is Polly though. Yeah. Which one's Miranda? Uh, probably. Me. I think the rainbow and gummy bears are double. No, it's not double cream. I think that's um. You better be right. Leon. Okay, that's Vera. That's Leon. That's Scott. That's Miranda. That's um Damien, and that's Polly. Yeah. Right. You better stay away from my girl, Tom. Wait, nope, I'm she's mine. <laughs> Just push you off. Wow. Tom, does you know what stats to get? Shaking my head. Do I fuck? Um, what stats do I get? <laughs> uh, it might not even be my mouse. I know money. I'll tell you. Uh, for Miranda, you need... Since we're playing long multiplayer, uh, you'll need... A ten charm and ten money. Okay. It wouldn't have been my mouse. Mom. Yeah, it does. If for some reason it does that. Try and click on oh. something. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for that, Polly. That day you just get older and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You go too smart. Later at night, you're out bar, ho bar hopping with two hipster monsters you know, Liam and Polly. The evening comes to a grinding halt when you're denied admission to a to club club. First name for giant club carried by the bouncer. Who's currently denying your entry? Uh, Polly. Yeah, I'm going for 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 Pol
how unsatisfactory my modes opera handy is to be the investigator of exclusive exclusivity not the victim of it <laughs> don't worry i got this Ooh. hey there handsome interested in some hot goal and ghoul action you're not taking part i am with you Polly. <laughs> the bouncer snores. I can see right through you, Casper Ina. Move along. Ugh! Who does that douchebag think he is? Keeping us out of the club like it's his job or something? Both Polly and Liam look to you expectantly. Now is your chance to save the night. Go for the dude. Wow! <laughs> Take over his shirt and we got this. So you can get above your head, making siren noises like a sexy happy <laughs> What the wow. fuck? In your wild movement, you don't notice the approaching bouncer and accidentally bring your fist smashing into his face. At which point, he brings his club smashing into all of you. It turns out your soft, shitty, naked body is no match for a club that has an entire club named after it. The other side is that Liam, Polly and Liam do manage to sneak in. Your no, downside no. is that you're now a co that you are now confetti. You lose two boldness and one fun. Alright. His stats are not good, his stats are not good. <laughs> Fine. Um, Alright, Liam, what's your stats? Uh, I'm at 25. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fills your team spirit. Willing to spectacular combat. Louder! You're clearly an airport one leader. What? Louder! My love, the game plus you try. Later, you see Miranda and Lara cornered by the wolf pack, who are watching them like a pack of wolves. The wolf pack is here! How would one of you ladies like to go on a date tonight with the hottest dogs ever to not be literal hot what? dogs? I wouldn't, at all. What a this is not at all how I like my courtships to begin. Where are the jewels? Where are the flowers? What a bitch. Where are the bloody heads of my enemies? <laughs> oh man, we'll show you a courtship. On the court. When we win, on the court. At sports. Don't call my Miranda a bitch. <laughs> we'll Miranda show you bitch. sports courtship. <sighs> Every time I think the guys at the school can't get any dollar. Oh, I get it. You're both shy. Don't worry. Our barks are worse than our bites. Except when we're doing sports, cause then we bring it, yeah! But if neither of you have the confidence to say which one wants to go out with us tonight, we can just choose for you. Yikes, like they're relatively well intentioned, but you should definitely step in and save them all of them. Um, I mean obviously. Brenda's eyes light up like an angry oh, face. how majestic! Sir Dilla Mer, as a little girl, I always wanted to be an a, a gym, what, aqua gymnast. Aqua gymnast. Of course you did. Until I realized it required hard work and discipline, at which point I decided I was much happier as a princess. But I still love watching it. How thoughtful of you to, to procure tickets for me and my favorite... Maid servant. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. Haha, <laughs> shut down. Let's go write a list of jokes we can make about this awkward loser. Whatever. You still made Miranda super happy and distracted the wolf pack, so win. You can post the drama and creativity. Let's do this! Okay, what do I want to go for? Uh, definitely boldness and fun. Yeah, I'm gonna go for boldness. Yeah, so bathroom or outdoors. Oh, I wanna go for fun more. <laughs> That day during recess, you stood a half hour rate that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much. But at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gave us too fun. Scott and Carly pull you aside. One of them is holding each of your own. Whatever's going on is serious. We need your help, bro! The midterm from AP Jump Scares is coming up tomorrow. And we're so unprepared. 
We tried everything we could to get a- Everything we could think of to get ready! I rolled up my textbook and smoked it! And I ate my homework! But nothing worked! We've only got one option left! We gotta cheat, bro! We just need to figure out how to do it without messing with the mm -hmm. teacher! I'm messing with the- Or with messing with the teacher! Either way, if you can help us, we'd be super grateful! That's all the incentives you need! You hooked them up with your ultimate cheating technique! Just take the test like normal, then use this time machine to go back and change your answers. Write all the answers on the teacher's face, he'll never see them there! <laughs> what right, the like fuck? a second one? <laughs> the second one's used for that! Uh, the second one? Like... Hmm. I don't know, um, but I have more smart- I feel like the first answer is more smart, and then the second one is fun, but I have more smarts than fun. Try fun then. But I have no because I have more. If I have less but you fun, have to go then for it's gonna fail. Yeah, but it's gonna fail. Probably. I don't I think so. <laughs> no. no. Uh, ha, okay. See, I told you, Bondi Bay would have a time machine. <laughs> Polly reluctantly hands Scott five dollars. <laughs> Damn, Sky, you really are good at guessing when people have time machines. I guess you've just got an incredible sense of timing. Now come on, let's grab this time machine and go screw up casually. <laughs> fun. You're going to use that time machine- Well, I got more boldness and fun. That's a good thing. That time machine to kill Hitler. You're going to use a time machine to kill Monster Hitler, but this seems about as important. The fuck? That's fine. Tom, um, no. <laughs> Why'd you challenge? Oh, what? We're, we're bad at deciding. You need to go random. Too bad. Yeah, you, you click random. The challenge is only good for if you're streaming it. Oh. Yeah. Well, In the audience. <laughs> Oh, they're both saying that. No. Um. <laughs> that's awkward oh. for you, Haley. No! I'm me! You're your money. Oh, wait, are they all at the same table? Yeah. Wait, wait are you going for always? Um, wait. Yes? What should I get for. I feel like you should get anything. Anything? Yeah, you shouldn't get anything. I shouldn't get anything. Yeah. Axel, wait, you got a bit more money. Well, I can just get some of a free gift, right? It's random anyway. Sure. I mean, most of the uh, stuff at the shop is for super endings anyway. Oh. Whoa, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh, boldness. I got... That's fine, you have me hold this. Oh, I can still, I can still the table. Fuck you, Tom. You bitch. We arrive at your table to find the coven eating and Polly and Ryan screaming. Why don't you attack? Alarm, alarm! Some of the guards! <laughs> I'm just using their bizarro mind powers on me. The cute tall one is my less attractive evil twin. She uses me, it's just like me. Clearly because the evil twin thing. We're not attacking anyone. We're eating. What do you mean less attractive? Disgraceful. Lies. Severed fudge. Subterfuge. Ah! Uh, I can feel them in my brain. Make me less cool and sexy. Ah! Uh, <laughs> every single lunch hour. You can't allow your friends to be attacked. Quick, save them from the famous menace. Just the memory. Drink their food. Obviously. <laughs> you reach into your pocket, you pouch of drugs, and pull out a handful of miscellaneous pills, which you sprinkle on the coven's mashed potatoes. What are you doing? Are you trying to throw this? Idiot, we're yes. just going to drug. You know what? How about we just cool. mention another table? Ha 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 ha, suckers! They what left the their fuck? druggy potatoes! <laughs> Looks like everything's turning up Polly! Polly, tell the trucks how to mix the potatoes! <laughs> and then decide she's a canoe. A canoe that thinks you're kinda cute! Um, sure. What uh -huh. the fuck did I just watch? Or read? <laughs> well, Polly is the best character. <laughs> My girl. Are you going for dumb? You can't sit there. Uh-huh. You can sit. <laughs> Take one. 
Do a proselium and Vera at their table and put plates to down. Vera holds up her hand. Stop. This is the cool people table where only cool people are allowed. So mainstream. I would agree with that Vera. Well, what Vera just said, but agreeing is something only uncool people do. Wouldn't you agree, Vera? <sighs> nice try, Liam, but I think we're getting away from the point. This interloper still wants to sit with us. But if wants to sit with us, he's going to have to prove his cool as we are. But without like trying to prove it, trying is something cool. So what is it going to be? Well, I guess I'll be going then because there's no way anyone could be ever as cool as Liam. Let me ask you this, would an uncool person be giving Vera 50 monster dollars right now? I don't Which know. Do Vera or Liam? <laughs> Pardon? The top one is Liam, the bottom one is Vera. Yeah, I know. I just yeah. don't know what to pay. Um... As long as you don't pick anything that involves Polly. <laughs> Wait, was that sarcasm? No, of course not. Titan was clearly being totally sincere. There it was again. You two did this on purpose. <sighs> now, why on earth would you do that? God, I can't tell whenever you're being sincere or ironic. That's so it, so so. Cool. <laughs> Everyone knows clear and efficient communication is the least cool thing of all. You wooed me with your open disdain for language. I can't tell if you're being serious or not. Exactly. Vera and Liam invited <laughs> to sit with them and chat. By the end of lunch, none of you had any idea what anyone else meant. So cool. Uh, random. Yeah. Oh, yay! <laughs> Bond is Bailey first. Wow. Pump. Okay. Let me look at. I need one more boldness, but I need more fun. So. That day during recess, you saw a half hour rave that goes full crazy. Blah blah blah. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay. Cool. Wow. And here comes Liam. What? Liam? Look <laughs> up! What? Randy, did anyone even listen about the fall of your living flesh? I have such pity for creatures that have to consume things other than blood. There's so many bad dots. Why are you here? <laughs> Where's Polly? <laughs> I think Polly's fine. No! No! <laughs> Polly is mine! I'm only gonna be him to for, for a bit. <laughs> like, have you heard of the Matro Chica diet? You eat a tapeworm, and then you eat a bigger tapeworm, you swallow that tapeworm, and so on, and so all of your organs are replaced by tapeworms. It's usually fatal, but the corpses hey, do it better. Polly! Polly! Oh man, that brings back memories. The Matryoshka diet is how I died. I miss bad diets. I used to get up to the stupidest shenanigans just eat my hands on the latest food replacement. Get out of here, Scott. <laughs> I might have given you a heart, but I want Polly. Whoa, are you guys talking about bad diets? Sign me up. They'll do anything that'll get me more ripped. Anything. Have you heard of the Inhop plan before you only eat things that came from a mummy? Mummies are writers, so you get super skinny, plus you get the raw food. You've heard of the paleo diet? Now try the Jurassic diet. You can't eat anything that isn't a dinosaur. Killing a T Rex alone will get you super buff. Oh, that's, I don't want to do either of them. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the second one seemed more like Scott, anyway. Yeah. Wow, I don't know why, I never thought of that. <laughs> Finally, I think a diet that combines my love of being wicked skinny with my love of death defiling sacred tomb. Yes! I like how her shirt says Santa's favorite hoe. Same. <laughs> I don't even need to eat because of my goals, but I'm still so down for this diet. Yes! Later, Polly thinks you about tomb robbing with her. And even better, I didn't get to leave it. Wait, how much money do you have? Yeah, I got- that was like a junk box, so what do I need? Well, Wait, I went from 45 to 99. You need charm. Yeah... So, dream again. Yep. 
Just the same. And yep. That's the drum. Later, you see Damien and Miranda chatting, and being a nosy little bitch, you decide to insert yourself into the conversation. I look forward to this adventure, so is there anything more wonderful than getting insight into the lives of commoners? You better not pull that shit the whole time. My dad's are loads of hell, you know. The... It, technically, I'm royalty too. Are you though? Damien rolls his eyes and turns to you. Mrs. Panther paired us up for our hands on Homer's assignment, giving us going on an adventure. Apparently I have some anger issues and the first revilance that I should be channeling into something productive. <laughs> like a first revilance isn't productive in and out of itself. And I'm supposed to work on being more independent. Which is so strange since I told my ladies and gentlemen in waiting to fix that for me last week. I wonder what sort of adventure might give us the wonderful experience we need to fix our perceived but obviously non-existent flaws. Uh, hey guys, I don't think you can get Miranda now. I read that from a scary Karen. <laughs> what? Well, I don't think you can get Miranda now. Uh, I think you need to have more charm than money. Uh. I'm just gonna hurt. Oh. Oh no. Why is it bad? What? I did the right thing. So you did the absolutely good. We should absolutely go at once. Nothing shall teach me independence like returning to my own kingdom. But she's happy about it, so why is it say not so good? Right. Uh, Am I going for someone else now? <laughs> you pick the boldness option. Oh. Where I can be baited on hand and foot by all my servants. And will have daddy to smite down anyone who says I'm not independent. And of course, the nurse who raised me can also help dispel the rumors that I can't dispel rumors myself. Damien looks at you like he probably thinks you're a fucking Don't idiot. Life. You're a fucking idiot. Yep, there it is. You lose much so smart and fun. Um, but I don't need those anyway. Yeah, you don't. Where are you going, Tom? That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. See? It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You get two creativity. You spot Liam and Polly talking about a party or something. Pies, of course, are excited to join them. Look, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine, but inviting everyone to the party on Facebook is going to make it seem Unbelievably late. Yeah. But if Lame. I don't make a monster Facebook invite, nobody will know where to go or what time to get there. We'll get like six guests. <laughs> but they'll be cool guests. A good party is all about a exclusive exclusivity, whatever. <laughs> no way. A good party is about getting hammered with a bunch of people who won't remember what you did in the morning. That's such a creature of Discord on that. I will just have friends resolve this for us. Why do you think the best place to invite people to a party? Okay, here's what you do. You hand letters... You... Wait, you hand letter free flies with the party info and then hide them in the bathroom to the three coolest coffee houses in town. But all finds those invitations to just create your party. Obviously the answer is to take a top of the selfie and then use Photoshop to cover your nipples with the party what info. The fuck? For in that Please shit out. Plaster to hold it into school. That's I probably Polly. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. What? That wasn't Polly? You think Graham's answer? <laughs> I like it where your head's at, but I think we could take these ideas even further. What about only yeah, one flyer? And instead of a date and time and location, it just says be there. If they're actually really cool, they'll already know where to go. So authentic. Oh my god, I'm going to go pick out our fonts right now. <laughs> The source of your ideas are genius and stupid, but if they're actually good... Wait, they seem to be kind of stupid. Liam actually likes you being too smart on creativity. Wait, Tom, if you want to go to Liam, you need more creativity. Alright. Oh, oh, something happened. Um, sure. Oh no, he's gonna sabotage one of us. Oh god. 
Weekend time means party all day and party all night. Party at dawn and party at sunset. Party at the Crepelusis in general. And you find yourself partying on the town. Well, uh, your favourite bowling alley with Damien, Vera, Polly, Bondage Bay and Kinky Axel. Another strike. Yeah. Can you bowl slightly softer? Just enough that the force of the balls isn't destroying the pins. Hee hee. Force of your balls. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I can't help how excellent I am at bowling. <laughs> excellent at bowling? Says a voice from behind you. More like excellently bad at bowling. A mummy in the double layered polo shirt struts up to you, flanked on either side of you by slimmer, similarly dressed mummies. Whoa, sick burn, Brad, says the other two mummies at the same time. They're so burned they can't answer. This is stupid. What do you say? Do you say that you're better than me at bowling? That's definitely not what I just said. Yeah, that's what I thought, because I'm Brad Braddington, the best bowler at this bowling alley. Actually, shoot. No. <laughs> sure, man. Damn right, I'm sure. Hey, you, what are you looking at? Oh, no, he's talking to you, actually. You happen to be looking at him because he, because you know it's common sense to look at the person who's talking to you. Do you think you're better than me at bowling? No one beats Brad Braddington, especially you, you ball like my grandma. <laughs> and my grandma has no arms or eyes or legs or fingers and then it's therefore not really bad at bowling. Wait, and it's therefore, it's therefore really bad at bowling. But if you believe you're so good at bowling, you literally never said you were good at bowling, then listen, we challenge you to a match of death bowling. <gasps> Axel, we should play this. No. <laughs> Unless you're a chicken, cock, <laughs> the other two mummies join him in their own idiotic ways. Coo coo ka ka, coo coo ka ka cha. All of them are doing what you assume is still very weird, and it's a pure imitation of a chicken. Still, it's somewhat amusing, so you accept the challenge. Death bowling is always spelled in caps and then played 2v2. I choose my bros, Chad and Tad, as my second player. They have no individual personalities and repeat everything I say. So therefore, it counts one person. At most, who will be your teammate for death bowling? <laughs> Time for you to choose your teammate and teach them not trying. So like I run into the problem, you might as well choose either Bondage Bay or Kinky Axel in case they die. Who do you think is crazy enough to win a bowling? Wow. I wonder who he's gonna choose. Pick me! Pick me! This is live, but he's Well, I chose, I chose Axel last time. The last time he chose Axel, it was good for him. A hush what? falls over the bowling alley, all eyes are on Bondage Bay as she approaches the lane. Don't die. Having successfully passed over the pit of hungry alligators, played an incredible electric guitar solo and vanquished the beast of Laska. This is death bowling after all. It's unclear why everyone in the bowling alley is suddenly invested in this match when they totally missed the setup. I don't know any of you personally. <laughs> but they are all watching intensely and their very dramatic, vaguely 80s music playing and it's super intense. Bondage Bay steps up and death bowls for her life. Expectacular and Chad and Brad or Tad are thoroughly shamed. Hey. And here, <laughs> Brad's pulling out of a broadsword that was somehow in his khaki caprice. I have lost a death bowling and now my life is yours. He kneels, exposing the back of his neck. Oh my god! This is totally reminding me of exactly how I died. How did you die? But unlike whoever de decapitated Polly after she lost a death bowling, wait, did she mean she died in death bowling? Or just that she was decapitated? Or just that she graciously allowed her enemy to kill her? The world may never know. Bondage Bay decides to show her mercy and throws the broadsword at Bradsey, first to turn the shame on him. 
Wow, says a random businessman who was at work and went bowling to bond with his co-worker says, you show mercy in addition to the skill and boldness shown by, sh by winged up bowling. That is the exact traverter of positive qualities I look for in my successor. I'm a CEO of a big and important company and I want you on my payroll. All of you. You're not sure why a CEO wants six high school monsters in his payroll, but you're not one going to complain. Now, when the two of you now somehow have one money plus two fun and the uh, and, uh, love and friendship of some good monsters. You all jump in, high five together, and the camera freezes in a bit of a weird but definitely super sp radical. Wow. Let's try it. Please do it. Random. Me! Hey. Thanks for the help, Tom. <laughs> You're welcome, bitch. Thanks for helping me get Polly. Let's do this! Also, if you want creativity, you need to go to the auditorium. Okay. Looks like Axel can't get charmed this round because the door lady's there. Where? How do you know? Because <laughs> it shows her face on the side. Oh, the side. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, so Axel can't get charmed. Right. What do you need? You need that, though. The day during recess, he showed a half hour rate that goes so crazy. Uh, that was already shown. Uh, this this part doesn't even matter. Just like, oh, you get plus two fun for some reason. Next. Okay. You're just getting ready to leave when you get a text from Polly. Hey, BB, let's party! <laughs> how, do can, how can you repeat such a formal missive? Missive? What? Missive. You track it down and yeah. like, Hey, you got my text! That's good, because I need help brainstorming! I'm going to a party tonight, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be lame, and that needs to change! See? It's a costume party, you know, where everyone dresses up as his favorite humans. What? I'm going as a sexy tax attorney. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? I'm not sure even the sexiest tax attorney can rescue this party from the depths of the lamitude. So, got any ideas up by things up? Oh, you got some ideas, and they're the spiciest. Mm. Uh, spike the punch with mandrake root. It turns monsters into actual humans. Okay, so. Okay, you go as a sexy tax dummy. I'll go as a sexy tax evader. Hmm. First one, I think. Hey. Yeah, they did the end of the party. Ha 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 ha! This is nuts. Look at all these humans in human costumes. Georgina, the poly, the party owl bear, totally just turned into a sumo wrestler. <laughs> and Larry, the witch. Looks exactly like former United States President Abraham Lincoln. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Larry doesn't just look like Lincoln. He is Lincoln. He has all Lincoln's memories up to the moment of his death. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Every newly transformed human at the party comes complete with a full lifetime of memories of childhood family friends. They have no recollection of their lives as a monster and are all currently going insane from the cognitive dissonance. Haha, <laughs> Manny the Manicore just turned into a retired cop who was screaming for his estranged wife and two sons. Pray! <laughs> <laughs> In about four hours, all these newly created people will revert to their previous forms, essentially murdering these new identities, lol. In the meantime, you and Polly have a great time scaring the shit out of actual humans and streaming it online. You get plus two creativity in one fun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That day while rehearsing, blah blah. Oh, you act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems seven roses equal two creativity points. Sweet, you gain two creativity. But Liam isn't paying attention to any of that. He cornered you afterwards to lecture you on Instagram filters. What? No one seems to understand about filters in that. 
they're not about making pictures better. They're about making pictures browner and harder to see. That's why I use my own property filter for almost my photos. Infinite Top. It's almost, it's also probably why I only have six Instagram followers. But we all make sacrifices for our art. In any case, I have to go. There's a, a dead rat in the parking lot. I almost, I still almost document. As soon as Liam's gone, Miranda peeks out of the air, conditioning dot. Goodness, okay. the situation is even more dire than I thought. If Operation Make Liam popular again, we must start get, get started immediately. What's that? Why, yes, of course, you're part of my operation. I unwillingly force people into my services all the time. But actually, in this person, you want to date? Yeah. Too bad she's mine now. Um, oh, no, you not. want to know why it's called Operation Make Liam popular again? Well, he's been alive for like centuries, right? I'm sure he must be popular at some point. I'll check the history books later. There's no time now. Phrase one is getting Liam more Instagram followers. I took the liberty of having my royalty, royal spies discover the password to his account so we could give him a material makeover. Oh my god. But what to do? Use the account to post a bunch of porn and bomb recipes. Pay a million homeless people. Wait, what? Seems, what? I know which one's Miranda, but don't go for her. <laughs> I'm not... Pay a million homeless people, or use the account to post a bunch of porn and bomb recipes. She has a lot of money, so the second one is definitely Miranda. I feel like the first option is fun, and then the second option is money. Yeah. But you have more money than fun. Not so fun. What is porn? <laughs> Never mind. If you suggest there must be some very classy and suitable porn wow. you're not. <laughs> what the fuck? We want for innocent Miranda. With Miranda's <laughs> blessing, you soon transform Liam's feed into a mannequin of nice boobs and deadly explosives. <laughs> <laughs> All seems to go well. People are liking his pics and jokes when you see Liam being led through the house in handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't even know what you're talking about. Encouraging acts of violence. I just post pictures on my food under opera ground filters. It's just figures of violence against the status quo, not a casual violence. So half my profile says, Come for the bootleg pornography statement of domestic terrorism. It's clearly ironic. <laughs> uh, if I was going to be wrongly incarcerated by the state, I would at least like some warning so I could fix my makeup. This is the worst day of my practicality in fine lifespan. The cops are actually realizing I'm released Liam in exchange. 14 fashion advice but you spend the rest of the week covering your digital tracks I lose two money and more creativity fuck all right oh. I need trouble but I can't get trouble I mean you could try I have enough Make money already they go to the library I guess I'll go to class should I just visit the gym See what's up. What's up? Oh my god. Oh, did, did, did it tell you? It doesn't tell you what you're at. Ah, what's up? Hmm. What should I get? I don't know. What's strong? Maybe the glasses? I have a lot of money. <laughs> so. Mm. Yeah, That's fine. Never mind. See you again. Mm. Oh. Let's do this. Oh, they're all at their own tables this time. <laughs> Thank God. 
Polly! Find Polly and Scott Hodoro at your chosen table. These two are together. I can only do one thing. I hear I call this meeting of the prank masters to order. Prank master Hal. Present and a can for. Chairman guys! All dressed up and ready to prank. Hey, how come you get to be the chairman? Well, which one of us can throw chairs around the room with our <laughs> ghost power? Chairman. <laughs> oh, I don't have ghost power, so oh, you, I get it, chairman, but no time to argue, Sky. We gotta come up with a baller food prank before the end of lunch. Oh yeah, okay, what if we ate all our food like a, go like a good boy? Is that a prank? No, Scott, for the last time it's not a prank, and I don't eat. But I'm having trouble coming up with another idea. Anybody else? You've been waiting all your life for an opportunity like this. You propose the ultimate food prank. Eat everyone else's food like a good boy. <laughs> I wonder which one is which. <laughs> yeah! You know what they say, when life gives you chairs, do pranks with the chairs. But I've never heard Coach say that. Doesn't it sound like the kind of thing he would say, though? Yeah, it kind of does. How am I supposed to help, though? You're the chairman. Easy, Sky. Just be a chair. <laughs> oh, of course. Scott twisted himself into an uncomfortable-looking shape. He seems happy, though. Like this? Exactly like that. Now you... Up you go. What? <laughs> Does this make me a chairman? Sure. Totally. Polly doesn't seem to mind sharing her title with Scott or her affection with you. Prank achieved. Right. Okay. Yeah. Me and Polly. Me and Polly. Me and Polly. You arrive at your chosen table to find random, friendly, not use that girl. Do you want to know what this one is for, Vera? No. <laughs> I don't think that. So, yes. The rose shaped napkin fold is for is between the ages of 16 and 22. Miranda's hands move fast as lightning, turning the rose into a gorgeous white swan. By contrast, this one folding is for first weddings, third weddings, and swamp doorways. What the? <laughs> As a fashion enthusiast, I have never been so bored by a piece of fabric. Oh, and this black uh, swan folding is for weddings, where you plan to br brutally murder all the guests. Not very popular, the black swan folding. <laughs> okay, that's sort of cool, but I'm still aggressively uninterested. You happen to have some napkin folding skills yourself. Maybe you can spice up this interaction. <laughs> You decide to show off your most impressive napkin fold. Uh, if you fold a napkin like so, it creates a self-aware napkin whose sole purpose is to find more napkins. This burning snake fold is for when it is time to leave. We're alone and stop explaining napkin folds. Okay, well obviously the first one is her. Oh, that's adorable. Look at it folding everybody napkins. It's like a tiny adorable surf. It looks like it's folding the other napkins into more self-folding napkins. I know, it's so effective. Go, little napkin surf, be free! Aren't you worried this will turn into a self-replicating napkin scenario, progressing geometrically until the world is nothing but napkins? Why? That sounds lovely. God, you're impossible. You seem to have mispronounced in impeccable. Whatever, I'm leaving before the napkin folds take over the world. Where leaves you alone for a romantic lunch with Miranda. You can't hang out too long though. You've got to stop those napkins before they take over the world. I'm sure. The fuck? Check them. Um. You just sat down to eat lunch with Damien and Liam. Well, see, with Damien, Liam was just taking pictures of his food. When a leather clad figure drops down near vent onto your table, it's the Slayer. To die. What the fuck? Lunch time over, dirt bags, time to die. This always happens when we sit together. Your death based rhetoric is offensive, don't spoil my food pack. Oh, I'll spoil more than enough your food pack. Count Stankula. I'm about to spoil your face. Just his. Right, right. Both your faces. Fuck. <laughs> the Slayer is right between the three of you. Liam can't save Liam, and you can't save Liam and Damien. If you got fast, we'll just save one. 
You move up, you run for this room your whole life. Flip the tables for justice. Your luncheon to heavy rendition of our father. You've done this loads of times. It's not the fray that any kind of magical effect on Damien, he just can't resist criticizing it. Okay, first of all, he's not our father. I've got two dads, and neither of them is a holy asshole. In a stupid cloud palace! <laughs> what the fuck? And thy kingdom come. What's that supposed to mean? Are we like praying for the end of the world now? Oh, sure. Beg him for your daily bread. What are you in prison? So think you, your omnitopum dad can't spring for better food than bread. What if, what if you got a gluten allergy? Do you still have to eat daily bread? Oh, this is ridiculous. While Damon continues to rave, Liam starts a few more article picks of his lunch, then carries it onto another table. Uh, um, are you done? Almost, I have a bit about multiple people with visions about really, oh wait, that's really fucking vicious. Close enough, eat holy water. You can't eat a licorice. Ah! Damien has a hard time forming anymore. I can't lost it. Opinions with his flesh on fire. He flees from the cafeteria when you retreat to at Liam's table. Now that he's done taking pictures of suit, he even lets you have some. This has been a real bonding experience. Oh, I did the girl now. <laughs> Tom needs more creativity. Okay, so I'm going to gym, obviously. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, what? Yeah, guys, but sadly, she's not part of this game, so that beautiful friendship will take place off screen and close to draw. You notice Liam and Miranda uh, talking to coach. They actually seem to be enjoying gym for a change. Something must be terribly wrong. You go over there to see what it is. Stay away from Liam. Bro. <laughs> no, you stay away from Miranda. No, well, Miranda's now. mine. <laughs> no, I'm all for inspiring athleticism in the hearts of the youth, but allowing you to make up your own sport seems a bit unorthodox, don't you think? Oh, but ordinary sports are ever so dull and uh, unrefuted. I'm sure we two could do much better. I've already got an idea, actually. I've had an idea for a sport since before they were even sports. I call it art. No teams, no rules, just pure creative expression. I'll be the uh, quarterback, of course. Art, brilliant! We will play with watercolors and sequins, and there shall be a sport board and a, and a goalie... What? Lower A and it's so good to see you guys getting enthusiastic about wholesome physical exercise. But I gotta say, art doesn't really sound like a sport. Well, it doesn't have the word ball anywhere in it. Ball. That's oh. easy, folks. <laughs> we'll call it art ball. Oh, art ball. well, yes, obviously, that's much better. But let me ask you this How do you score points in art ball, huh? William and Rand oh, both. Liam and Miranda both look at each other, totally stumped. The dream hangs in the balance, time to step in. Obviously the sport board assign, assigns inspiration kicks to the... What? Metaphysical, Met metaphysical yeah. linebacker who scores 11 points for each poem he successfully publishes in the Atlantic. Didn't you read the rule book? Okay, that's definitely Liam. Don't you see? The points were inside of us all along. Shirts. Yeah, my god, you're right. I become so obsessed with the points out there that I've forgotten about the points in here. You kids have taught me a valuable lesson today. From now on, points are hereby banned from all our sporting events, at least until I forget I said this. Doesn't that mean we can arbol a varsity sport? Of course, the only real sport after all is togetherness. Oh, isn't that cheesy? That is bullshit. Yeah, and <laughs> throw themselves into uh, recruiting a team. Coach Bans points. The way your team was doing this uh, year, hardly anyone notices the difference. You gain charm and bonus. Um, sure. 
That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you are struck by lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate name for yourself. You tell her what to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggiest moves in the world. But in it, just in it was so awesome, innovative, and appropriate that people start to go with it. Quite that feat, you get too creative with it. Oh, yes, yeah. We were devs there, you touched your cover but we're in them for your souls, oh. and I'll do other players to call you by that name until the end of the show. <laughs> so, what's your nickname, Tom? I don't know. Mr. Piano Man? No. Mr. Piano Man. It's my <laughs> choice, not yours. <laughs> uh. Um, so, what is it then? I don't know. If you can't come up with one, we're sticking with Mr. Piano Man. Just call me T. T. Yeah, T. Hey, okay, Mr. P. T. Fuck you. From England. <laughs> Later, you see Liam scrolling from his phone, looking like the embodiment of NUE. Hey, Ty, Tom, what are you doing? Stalking trespass for romantic purposes and offering rather absurd advice? Magnificent, I could use some rather absurd advice. As exchanges messages with a uh, work on this dating site and all and all, all going well for time but I'm grown tired of our exchanges he's a bit clingy and being a bit clingy is the seventh biggest turn off right between being sarcasm illiteracy and actually being a pickle and not a person what the fuck the postmodern protocol Dictates for me to just ghost him and never talk to him. That's horrible, and I would never do that to anyone. You see, I'm Liam, handsomely mysterious, yet a true gentleman. But neither do I want the emotional turmoil of telling him how I really feel and having an actual conversation about it. What an ordeal! So I started on just getting him a bunch of, oh, sending him a bunch of emojis and never texting him again. That should do right. The thing is, how do I convey his complex arrays of sentiments through the friendly language of emojis? But your type shine, surely you excel at complex sentiments. So I might someday feel like sharing them with you. Maybe croissant school bus, shooting star, trumpet and crocodile. This one, little vampire gro- I don't know! I don't know which one would be great. Oh. Yay! Okay. Oh, this that one is clearly the best option. How did I not think of it? Which version should I choose? Little Vampire Grown? Dismented in overly attached Macula or Little Vampire with its little silly hat? Grown dismented in overly attached Macula. Maybe the silly hat one is not suitable for the situation. Let's go with the classic. Okay, just sent her. It's actually we're right, let's see. Oh, the work earlier being understanding of little vampires feeling and respecting them even if a bit hurt emoji. And applying back with the formerly grateful and ready to move on poop emoji. <laughs> Look at this, he just texted me with the emoji that's just waving his hand like he's saying bye with an expression that he's going to break all bonds but without being resentful to it. Oh yeah. Perfect, we sold this as a team. Cheers to us. A cheers to the creative people that have just turned this very <laughs> complex feeling and scenario in a friendly and colourful emoji. You mean two charm and one creativity. Let's do this! Finally, my throat is hurting now. Can hang out in the bathroom because you're a sweat. No, 40. Oh, I guess just some people want to watch World Burn by skipping class and heading out of the bathroom. You could give zero shits, but gain two boldness. On your way out, you spot Polly, still wearing the lab coat she stole from that human party the other night. She takes it off and throws it at you to get your attention. Yo, yo, yo! That human party convinced me I want to be a scientist. Not just any kind, a party scientist! What's a party scientist, you ask? Why, just a scientist who's dedicated to discovering the secret to the raddest party. 
Through a series of extremely scientific experiments, I aim to discover what exactly makes a party good. So I can just spill whatever it is into a vial and drink it. Or, you know, just have really dope parties all the time. Anyway, I'm going to a bar mitzvah tonight and I need your scientific advice. What can we do to push this party over the edge? The electric slide with actual electricity. Chemistry! Uh. uh one. I think chemistry. I think first one. I'm trying to think of the stats. This seems like a boldness option or a fun option. Chemistry. <laughs> Just the way it's like typed out. And it's in caps as well. Or charm. Uh, the electric slide but with actual electricity. She likes danger. Yay! Hey. 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 <laughs> Look at him dance! I don't know why I never thought of this before. It's just basic science. Lighting gives light to a Frankenstein. A Frankenstein is stitched together. Massive sexy flashing limbs. <laughs> also what a party is. Lighting is the life of the party. What's that? You wanna know who the bar mitzvah boy is? I don't know. I don't know any of these kids. Crashing bar mitzvahs. The height of party culture. You have so much fun, you forgot to tell Polly. She looks like Frankenstein's monster. Oh my god. You can have fun in one time. I don't want more charm. That was good. Something happened to you. Oh. Excellent. Alright. <laughs> okay. Every week, Liam contacted you for your advice. Oh, I can screw over Tom. But he just me, so I won't. No, 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 you misunderstand. I don't want your advice. I want to hear you express an opinion. Just to you. See, if you're capable of forming one. Specifically, I'd like to hear your opinion on Tired Tom's cultural literacy. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Is he culture like an artisanal cheese or uncultured like a milk? I mean, obviously. <laughs> You're so cultured, he can tell the difference between theater and theater. Uh, of course, the British. <laughs> he thinks Summit is a female son. <laughs> Do I help you, Tom? I didn't mm. screw you over last time. You wanted Miranda, though. I don't want Miranda. Okay. He can. <laughs> I mean, so can I. I definitely heard the difference between the two words you just said. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I have to go find Tired Tom now. For romantic reasons. Not to ask him to explain what you said. Why would you think of that? Liam hurries up on his artistic mission. The difference is that theater is done by actors, whereas theater is done by actors. You gain free credit. Let's trade places. <laughs> oh, more reading. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. I need to go to gym again. Thing. As always, just to try. You're gearing up for another boring round of dodgeball, Ben. All right, my eager beavers. Today we will, uh, we will again be uh, advancing the young and noble sport of our ball. Get ready. Take your place with your fellow teammates. Ah, our ball. The noblest, most sophisticated, most beautiful, most refined of all the sports. Ah, I hate pretty much all those adjectives. The best part about sports is getting all your violence and rage out, and our ball completely takes that away. Ah, must us I'm not gonna try. Think of all the passionate emotions in the paintings of Vincent Van Gogh. Liam, stop. Nobody cares about your stupid game or stupid dead painters. Excuse me, Paulina, but Vincent Wangle isn't dead. He's undead. Oh my god. I, w I wish I could make our ball dead. Damn, your team is not getting their act together. But if you find a way to lead them to victory, maybe you can all be happy. Also, where the fuck is Miranda? 
You have to come up with a foolproof strategy because you I guys are foolproof. There's a reason Wait, I read what, that foolproof. What, where the fuck is Miranda? <laughs> what? I don't know any of these guys. Time to take Polly again. What? I mean, sure. No, oh, never mind. Heck yeah. Let's, oh wait, she likes it. Let's do this thing. Awesome. I'll go drag him up from hell. Dude, why would Vincent want go be in hell? He was the best. I think he acts unable to summon him with our ghost powers. Wait, do you have ghost powers at all? No time for a plain logical thought to this. Sparkly lights roll around you, and suddenly the one earned ghost of Vincent Wunkle appears. What's up, fam? Welcome back to the <laughs> world of the living. <laughs> Where am I? For what spectacular purpose have I been conjured to use my unique artistic skills for the greater good? Oh, we are a bunch of legally adult high schoolers playing a stupid made-up variation of dodgeball. Why are you all still in high school if you're legal adults? Asked Vincent Mongol. Honestly, it's just because of how much drugs we do and the sexual content of so many of these situations. Yeah, it'd be hella inappropriate if we were minors in most of these events. World events. Sometimes these millennials get too meta even for me. Oh, Vincent. The remarkable misadventures in which we go, we so re repeatedly find ourselves. So I'm not even special? You do things like summon dead point painters all the time? About three times a day, yeah. For the three weeks leading up to prom. Wrong answer. Apparently Vincent Mongol is a bit of a diva and feeling upstaged by this, trashes the entire gym by throwing paint everywhere. Classic. Vincent Tantrum. The game is unable to continue, and your team loses by default for summoning him, thus costing you free creativity. I don't even think I need that. Um, sure. You don't. <laughs> Tom does that. I do, oh. yeah. Tom just needs to do it one more time. Oh, God. Okay. That day, while rehearsing for a class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems like you're getting the classic creativity be strong. Oh, for what you see, do you all get? I'm not getting it. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your classic point in discussion, so you decide to convey it into music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else starts joining you in a kick ass musical number. It's so amazing that people with whom you were arguing will try to get your point and change their minds about once the song is over. I gave two credits for two. Uh, just Scott strolls by happily munching on something. Liam gasps at him appalled. Thank God, I'm about to say, ew. What the fuck what? is he dressed up as? What on earth are you eating, Scott? <laughs> this delicious new flour of fangles, potato chips, maximum ultimate meat double barbecue massacre. Really? Because it looks like a a raw, severed goat head inside a cardboard tube. Oh yeah, I guess it does. Could have sworn it was a potato chips, but still tasty one. Tasty, tasty? Does want an environmental destruction sound tasty to you? I don't know, is that kind of jerky? <laughs> Axel, <laughs> and jerky. <laughs> no scars. Don't you realise that in order to harvest these goat heads, Fangles and Co. D. I can't say that word. D. Yeah, oh, D. D. Decap decapitate <laughs> millions of innocent goats every year. But do what do they do with the bodies of the goats? Nothing. It's horrendously wasteful practice. Oh no. And poor headless goat bodies running around and bumping into things. We have to stop them, man. Wait, really? I was just trying to make you feel guilty. I didn't actually want you to make a plan action, but someone was just one. Assemble of army of vengeful undead goat horses. Ryan, extremely mean. What? You did it the first one. First one. Ah, yes. Necromancy. The ultra, ultimate tool in protesters arsenal. Ooh, ooh. Can I ride a goat? Can I? Can I? Uh, of course you can ride a goat. In fact, given your size, you'll probably need to ride several. <laughs> Voss or several? Is that a really big goat? 
No time to explain basic concepts, Scott. We've got an evasion to all the straight. As long as you're reanimating things, you can reanimate some severed go heads too. You don't eat anything, which totally helps you clean your room. You gain two creativity and one smiles. Let's do this! My turn! Bondage Bay! Bondage! Bondage Bay! 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 Bondage Oh. <laughs> Suddenly you see Polly vomit ectoplasm all over her cell phone. What? You rushed to help her? Ugh! I just got my 97 k as an opening line on Tender! You don't need Tender on my gear, baby. <laughs> and I just have to puke out of pure boredom. Hey, Axel. Hey, hi. Hi. Hey! Hey! What am I supposed to do with hey? Axel, hey! Okay. You know, <laughs> People are just copy pasting hey and sending it to every monster that looks halfway interesting. What about you? Are you a hey person too? I hope not. If you read the gender profile of a fun loving spectral delight such as myself, what would you say to me? You're beautiful? <laughs> are you drunk? Cause I want to do you all night long. <laughs> oh. Second up, second up, second up. Yes. That's a great opening line. Also, let's do drugs. You wake up an indiscriminate amount of time later, feeling like shit, but happy about it. So like unicorn shit where it's rainbow or something. Oh, when the you unicorn. She's grinning like a lunatic and it's clear something went down. Maybe one of you? Hey there, cutie patootie! I had the best time the other night! We should really do all this again sometime, and I need all of it. Even that do animal style stuff? What? You left a couple things at my place. I put them inside, outside your locker. What? <laughs> what? With that, it disappears, leaving you to wonder exactly what transpired between you and what article of clothing you left by. And when you open the box, that bomb is away. All you see are a pair of handcuffs and the last surviving rescue pigeon. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Of course I have handcuffs. Neither of those things are yours. <laughs> but you would hate for Polly to think you're lame. Apparently when she said zoo animal stuff, she meant stealing a bird. Oh. So it seems like maybe you guys didn't have didn't so much have sex, but she clearly wants to spend more time with you, so oh, hell yeah. You go home with a huge grin and a new pair of handcuffs and the last surviving <laughs> whoops. What was the last surviving rescue pigeon? You should be more careful with your belongings. Irrelevant. You've gained Polly's admiration and plus two charm in one fight. Stop giving me charm. Her. So rude. <laughs> She's my girl. Wow. Okay. What do you mean, Wow? You have Miranda. Well, only for now. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh -oh. That is not fair. Go, Axel, go! I have to. <laughs> and finally, Emma, uh, artfully arranging his food while Miranda diligently sorts her silverware. Neither of them is eating, obviously. Have you found it yet? I'm trying, Liam, but finding the perfect silverware for your cafeteria food pick is an art, not a science. How hard can it be? It's just silverware. Just silverware? And I suppose the food in your food pick is just food? No, it's a metaphor for urban consumption in a post post postmodern industrialized mega society. Well, my silverware is a metaphor for. silverware? Yes, is that not enough? It's more than enough, but we can hurry it along. The lightning is perfect right now, and I don't want to lose it. You're a bit of a silver. Uh, a, a fissy nado yourself. Maybe you can speed up the selection process while some turns leave them demonstrating your knowledge. Try the picture fork. It's a fork for taking pictures of. That seems like Leon. Nothing conveys elegance and tastes like a floating spoon. That's right. Really. Okay. Ah yes, the floating spoon, the most distinguished of utensils. What's a floating spoon? Well, of course you will know about it. Rude. 
No, no, I wasn't being rude. Rudeness is simply the way one must introduce a glowing spoon. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, of course you didn't. You're not as cultured as I am. She's such a bad. Huh? <laughs> such smug superiority. I am no match for this spoon. Brenda produces the glowing spoon with much fanfare. It looks like a regular spoon to you, but then what do you know, you peasant? You convince Miranda to spend some time with you after lunch, lovingly explaining the spoon's finer points, even though spoons don't have points. Let's do this! <laughs> and I'm sitting with Polly before we come to take that table. <laughs> you arrive at your chosen table to find Damien dejectedly hefting a ball of mashed potatoes, while Polly sadly passes her hand through the oh. same. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? I honestly do not know. I tried throwing potatoes at people and yelling, FOOD FIGHT! But I think everyone is too scared of me to fight back. And I can't throw any food because of my stupid ghost hand. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture, sure, but not food. <laughs> There's gotta be a way to provoke a food war. My dads are always telling me to be more political. But we're not political. Your strength is hitting things, and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot? That's it? Let's set the cafeteria on fire! Wait, no, that's not a solution, that's just arson. Why do I always jump straight to arson? It's hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves, so you step in with an idea of your own. Hey, Polly, you know how the Greeks fought a whole war over hell and the choice questions you need to get you to them with? Or is it fat over scarce resources, still have everybody's food and put it on a pile that ought to do it. I like where your head is, but I'm not super into being kidnapped and shit. What if we skip some sets with some good old flashing? Now let's put the table in, in a practice motion, puts her top off. What the <laughs> fuck? This is a high school cafeteria. Polly's rash actions have set the rolling cauldron of horror bombs, sets it on fire, and that dances on the ruins. Soon the air is thick with sausages and gravy. Potato crisps fly everywhere like flavored shrapnel. Polly puts her shirt back on now that everyone's too busy fighting to remember what they're fighting about. Like, like mine, really? Where are the tips that launch a thousand chips? The view you just got makes that pun worth it. Um, sure. Pun that view. This is bullcrap. What? Tom, you're ahead of me. I, I don't even know who I'm dating anymore. You should go to the shop. Maybe get something. Yeah, I'll go to the shop. Hey, stranger. Since you don't want to date anyone else. Good old Tom, what's good? I've got four dollars. Do not get the tampon. Do not get the tampon. It makes it worse for you. Um. See you later. Well, you just get a free gift. Maybe you get lucky, like I did. <laughs> oh. Hmm. No. I don't know what that is. There's most of the stuff in the shop is the secret ending. Uh. Yeah. We three. Last thing we can do. Yeah. Do Sorry, no words. Last chance for anything. Well, I got my fun all the way up. I think I'm gonna go for boldness again. That day you skip class and tend to spend the turn in the bathrooms. But you encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Blah 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 blah. Boldness. But none of that matters. You like to meet Polly for more party experiments. Alright, our research is progressing well so far, but we've got a very limited sample size. I need to know that we can make any party the best, not just some parties. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna crash a, a funeral! If we can make that fun, we can make anything fun. What the fuck? Brainstorm <laughs> time! How can we put the fun back in funeral? Bouncy castle? Or possess the body and just bring him back for one last party? Bouncy castle! One. Bouncy castle! Totally. I mean, she might like that too, I don't know. I don't know. She likes to party. Just remember, but, 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 but that seems more like fun. Okay. Ne never mind. Yeah. Hey, thank you for going with the achievement. Night. Thank you, man. Woo, that was awesome. I was totally inside that dude. Wait, what? Inside me. Yeah, wait, what? 
you're supposed to be with me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they were like, does anyone else want to say a few words? I was all, ooh, ooh, me. They totally freaked out. And then I was like, let's turn this funeral into a wedding. And I got married to like 11 people. What the fuck? They're all widows now because I left that dude in a heat on the dance floor, but whatever, weddings rule. Hey, Bonus Bailey, you know what? I think we're getting really close to the true formula for a rad party. You're the best science partner ever. You guys, she has a kind of lot of science partners. You doubt she even knows the real definition of science, but she's just too happy for you to correct her now. Come on, the night's still young. Let's go turn an all-night laundry mat into an epic rave. Those washing machines don't know what hit them. You guys have two creativity and one fun. Um, sure. I think I've got Polly in the bag. No, 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 no. I need that, Tom. Hmm, should I push? Hmm, see. I, I helped you. I helped you. Go to class, Tom. Go to class. Now, what do you mean to class? You need no, class. You, no, you went to go the other room last time. <laughs> go to class, Tom. That day, the teacher was just tired of teaching, so she recursed the classic technique of not giving a shit and putting on some historical TV show for you to watch. What you don't expect is that. It's super effective. God bless the golden era of television. The TV show is compelling thanks to the ridiculous amount of nudity and bloodshed. But at the same time, you actually learn a lot about history. You get two smiles. You casually read in the latest issue of Monster Magazine when you're rudely interrupted. See, you and Ty and Tom, a sensible monster with a good head on its shoulders and at least plus smarts, is reading some Monster Magazine. Yeah, and that's bad because we're warriors, so we need to fight. Scott takes the magazine from you and put you there. Hooray, let's go solve another one of world's major problems. No, Scott, we're social justice warriors. We see Ty and Tom ever since our major success with our Fangles got... Go, Fangles go, head to battle. We've taken it upon ourselves to stand up against injustice. By pushing magazines. No, Scott. As you... Okay. okay, as you no doubt noticed, Monster Magazine's sexiest monster alive this year is Count Vexter Von Musselbot, the world prince slash bodybuilder. This makes him the fifth royal werewolf bodybuilder in a row to earn a title. What about those of us with learner t physiques? What about our representation? So now we're in dividing to get Monster Magazine to name someone more marginal community as their sexy creature alive. We just need to figure out a way to convince them since I guess punching magazines wasn't good enough. Push, that's easy. All you need to do is solve everyone's body image issues for everyone. Right, issues. Whatever it is. Make our own version of the magazine featuring a free Winged Chabukra on the cover. Lean heavy on the warrior part, Storm Monster magazine, and hold the editor in chief captive until he promises to stop exclusively promoting one extrafitic as the premical of monster sexiness. I don't know. First one. First one. Um, what a brilliant idea. Three winged Chewbacca's are. Definitely an undeserved population. I've played sports game against someone exactly like that, and he's always wanted to be a model, but never thought anyone would want to do pictures of him. Now we can. You can and you do. You do all the pictures and make a mock up of your own monster magazine. It goes like hella viral, and before long, it becomes. It's becoming more celebrated than the actual Monster Magazine. Pretty soon after, you get a letter from the editor in chief officially admitting defeat in the face of your superiority and relinquishing his magazine and headquarters to you. Sweet, now you have a magazine which instantly brings you free money. Okay. Hey, hey, I know you're about to move on to your next misadventure, but I just wanted to say you to say really quickly. As pretty much the early girls in the school shaped differently than the rest of their classmates. 
It was really nice to see a free winged Chabuka celebrated over a Royal World Bodybuilder. It gives us hope too, you know. Aww. That was actually really sweet. The coven is too much cooler. Mind you not babbling on about what the end of the world bullshit and expecting your help with it. It's way more fun to interact with your classmates than their compliment complimenting your dad. Alright. Okay. I definitely need charm. Should I be good after that? <laughs> this is my last chance. Yeah, you need charm. Okay. But I don't know if the money is going to affect it. Uh, please be here, Miranda. You join Miranda and Damien team for game two. It goes differently. Someone's really echoing. <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Come on, shit dicks. Face the power of hell. Paint this battlefield red, Damien. Grind them all into a thin red paste. You express your worry and confusion over the number of corpses in the gym. Isn't this supposed to be a friendly game? Friendly? What the fuck is friendly? I only have two <laughs> words in my vocabulary. Kill and murder. Honor, glory, feudism. These are the words we will fight for. These are the words we will die for. Well, you didn't sign up to die. You gotta stop this before it turns into a FPS or something. Uh, get off my nuts, narrator. You don't understand the ancient reasons for that was slaughter. You may die before us, but we won't waver. I think you need to pick the second one. Guys, it's just a dodgeball. Let's throw the ball and have fun. Okay, mm. you pick up a ball from the corner and throw it at your opponents. You hit one and he goes to the bench, overjoyed to have escaped the slaughter. You smile at Damien and Miranda as if it to say, See, it wasn't that easy. Good call. There was no need to make this difficult. We can dominate and have fun at the same time. Ooh, we dominate. Miranda, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Permission for explosive granted soldier. The floor beneath the opposing team explodes in a shower of wood and sh and shrub metal. When did they put these mines down there? We are victorious, and it's all thanks to this brave hero who reminded us of the importance of fun in warfare. You should be proud of your victory, as long as you can come to terms with all the dodgeball deaths on your on your conscience. You gain two fun and boldness. Uh, I wonder who I'm going to pick. <laughs> None of them, totally. Yourself. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> Hi. You only pick none of them if you're going for secret endings. Uh, Polly. It's Polly time! Yeah it is, Polly time! <laughs> Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> are you going to pick Polly too? That's not going to work. I'll pick Miranda. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> Sure. You finally pluck, pluck up the courage and ask your beloved to go to the mod for prom with you. Prom? It's not that I love the concept of prom, but we need to be there. It's only to remind everyone that we're cooler than them. It's almost a duty, <laughs> so we should do it, huh? Sure. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you and Liam spend the night oh. discussing Objective <laughs> 70s TV shows and Hungarian literature. Wow. wow. Axel, we should definitely do that. <laughs> you both left a lot. Of course, Liam seemed to genuinely enjoy himself without the need for posing or judging other people. You notice his hand gently touching yours, and you know Liam well enough to know it wasn't accidental. Maybe falling in love for poses after all. Alright. Yay! <laughs> yeah, same thing. Are you asking me to go with you to prom? Is it exactly as the ancient prophecy foretold? You see, two centuries ago, a seer predicted that one day at the Were Kingdom would be shaken by a violent monster who would ask a mere princess to prom, and they would engage in a very nice evening together. It wasn't the most useful or relevant of her prophecies, if you think about it. But I don't care, you're the date fate has had prepared for me for centuries. Yay! Yay! So look at fate lead us into a magical night. <laughs> From that was fantastic. We had a lot of fun, but that wasn't enough for Miranda, who wanted it to be the best night ever. So she committed all the fun from some of your classmates and used it to increase yours. You thought fun didn't work that way, but it turns out it does. You'll both remember that night forever. Let's do this! Yay. Well, I'm just what? Prom? A 
Of course! Pending will be another perfect opportunity to conduct our experiments in party science! Yay! Yay! We didn't so get rejected! <laughs> but why you're the best science partner! That's not what you meant, but sure, why not? Sooner than expected, Rob Knight is here. The two of you are finally ready to crack the ultimate party formula. You bring some wild animals, you do lots of ecstasy, you awaken the dead, you even do the dance of joy. <laughs> Everything is perfect. You feel cloudy and full of energy. You see beautiful, shiny lights, and you feel connected to everyone. Obviously, most of that is thanks to the ecstasy, but still. You feel like you've conquered the night, put a flag with your names on the peak of it, life itself, then down comes. But now, you're up on a hill by the sea, watching the sun slowly coming up. No idea how you got there, but who cares? You're at peace, watching the gentle tide in the morning, and you realize Polly has her, her hand over yours. Let's she looks at you. party till dawn. Oh, yeah. I got a secret ending, I think. Oh, maybe. You know what, Bondage Bay? This might be the Molly talking, but I think... I finally got it. All these parties have been wildly different, yet all of them have been the very best. I put a lot of thought into it, and I can only think of one thing they all have in common. I think the formula to a perfect party must be sharing it with the right person. You don't answer. You just hold her hand and you spend the morning watching the sun slowly come up over the sun, the sea together. Hey! Yes, standing. We did good. Hey, that was great. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the months of prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened and it was wonderful. Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. Now he designs Instagram filters. Polly graduated from doing lots of Ayahuasca and now she appears to be hallucinating people and acts as desperate animal. Miranda started a non-profit to help countries without a monarchy. Because all countries should have the rights to be gradually ruled by a mere kingdom. For the three weeks the monster prom seemed larger than life and then it was gone, just like that. The powerful monster prom night have ended there, but there are plenty of battles left in the war called youth. Once again, we were young, and not afraid, and we were ready to start. Hey. Hey. Ooh. Nice. Polly. No, she's mine. Uh, only yes. get this one time. <laughs> so, she's like. Wow. This was such a good game. But yeah, we all got accepted the prompt. <laughs> Way. I didn't get to accept the Miranda. Okay. Axel! Orgy <laughs> planner, what the hell? What? I what? saw one of the credits was for Orgy planner. <laughs> I mean, Axel's called Orgasm. Just for him. You didn't hear the recording, right? Not yeah, yet, no. Yeah, that. Tom doesn't. <laughs> So basically, I'm orgasm now, so I got caught up by the radio. Well, yeah, I haven't ended the recording now. When's the recording? Alright, thank you for watching. Um, do you try the same thing? Probably uh, my girl. No, she's mine. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. And subscribe to Kicker Gamer 16, she's amazing. Yes. And um, follow my girl on Twitch. And do not follow me because yeah, bad. Rule of Rule of <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching this very long video. Till next time, peace. Bye. Bye.